Hi, this is Jeannie. I wanted to show you real quick the butterfly and pollinator garden that I made last fall. So what I do is in the fall I will dig um, when it's fairly dry out but not, you know, you want to make sure you can dig in the soil. Sometimes it can be too hard. And I just flip the sod over so that the grass is on the bottom and the sun kills the, um, the roots. If, it ha if you have a good rain afterwards it can kind of re-root but then you would just want to flip it again. And I kind of just let that set all winter and then it was ready to plant out. Uh, if you can't dig or if you don't like digging, I like it for the exercise, you can just put cardboard down with straw or leaves over it. And I did plant a few things last fall just to kind of get started. Uh, that fringe tree, we got that as the accent. And then I had moved this cone flower, uh, the uh, anise hyssop there I grew from seeds, so I put that in there. And um, the anise hyssop is a really good one for the pollinators. They've been all over that. And then this anise hyssop I bought at Lowe's and it's, you still can see all the butterflies on there. Uh, of course the butterfly bush is always one that they're attracted to. There's a little grasshopper, he's probably eating everything. And this one is a miniature one, I got it at Lowe's. So it's only supposed to get like three feet tall. And also these mums, they're, I don't think they're good for pollinators, but I had them, so I went ahead and stuck them in here. Um, the best, though, for the pollinators is this Play in the Blue Salvia. There's three plants, and you can see how big they are. And they're just covered in butterflies and bees. Um, it's an annual, so it's one I'm just going to have to buy every year. I don't think you can get seeds for it, but it is well worth it. You can just see them going crazy on it. And it, it really spreads. So one plant, really three for this, is almost overwhelming. I had an, a big aster that filled this whole area, and it got some sort of brown disease and fungus. So I pulled it out, and I stuck some... Uh, hummingbird plants in here because we have a hummingbird feeder right there and they kept going from you know here to the hummingbird feeder and there wasn't much for them to eat in here so I've got a few new things I just stuck in there and this is bee balm that I got that I actually grew from seed I don't it was labeled lemon so obviously it's not lemon so I don't know what the real name of it is but they they like that too um, I've got the Joe Pie weed that flowered real pretty, and I just deadheaded it. So, um, but it had huge flowers that some pollinators liked. And this cat mint here is one plant, and it started blooming in June. So that is just crazy. It's still blooming. It's beautiful. Um, again, the petunias there, I just stuck them in because I had extra, I don't think pollinators like petunias coneflowers and then the gar is pretty it's just starting to reflower it flowered in the spring you can kind of see it there the gar but it's a nice easy project um, in the fall something you can do here coming in October when it cools down and um, it's good for the bees and different pollinators and it's fun. We've enjoyed coming out and watching all the insects in here. We had several praying mantis. So it's been a, a nice, fun project.